Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're having a great day. In a recent discussion, to which I will soon say more, a clueless Muslim said something ridiculous but popular in response to something that I said about Islam when I was asked why I oppose Islam. Now, I thought I don't really need to bother saying anything about this because this guy is, as said, rather clueless and unimportant. But then I thought about it further and realized, hey, it's not just this guy. This clueless guy reflects much of the fan base of popular Muslim apologists like Mohammed Hijab. He is a typical representation of too many clueless mainstream Muslims. So why do I not correct a popular false misconception by destroying this clueless Muslim in just two minutes? Yes, I said two minutes. Here we go. Since I was asked, I mentioned that Islam orders the death penalty for leaving Islam, upon which this clueless Muslim guy denied this and said, Islamically, if you kill one person, it's like you killed all humanity. That's how precious a life is in Islam. This is a typical misconception held by clueless people and sometimes presented dishonestly. The concept is mentioned in Quran chapter 5 verse 32. And what the Quran actually says is that Allah had told the children of Israel that whoever kills a soul, unless for retaliation or for causing corruption in the land, it is as if he had killed all mankind. The Quran took this from the Talmud, which the Quran should not be confirming because the Talmud is a traditional Jewish text created by Jewish scholars as an interpretation of the Torah. The bigger problem is that this verse is not about killing, but unjustified killing. In the next verse, chapter 5, verse 33, the Quran therefore explains that the penalty for those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and cause corruption in the land is that they should be killed, crucified, have their hands and feet cut off from opposite sides or exiled. Causing corruption in the land includes leaving Islam and talking about it, like in my case. Therefore, Muhammad is also reported to have said that no Muslim can be killed except for retaliation, sexual perversion or apostasy, leaving Islam. He also said that someone who leaves Islam should be killed. His cousin, son-in-law and fourth caliph Ali is reported to have burned people who left Islam. Therefore, it has always been the consensus of Islamic schools and most Islamic scholars that apostates, adulterers, homosexuals, heretics, and disbelievers who reject Islam's authority should be fought and killed. So no, Islam does not forbid the killing of people and value human life. Islam allows the killing of many people for their choices and beliefs. It considers itself the highest authority and oppresses people, and it is anything but friendly to human life. Now think about how Muslims would react if other religions and governments treat treated Muslims the way that Islam treats former Muslims and disbelievers who reject Islam. Okay, I think that's two minutes, maybe even less. But you can watch a longer explanation of this topic in a video that I will link just here, somewhere. I will be back. Have a good day and stay away from Islam. What the hell, man? I'll be back. Have a good day and stay away from Islam. I don't need to say it again, I already said it. Stay away from Islam. Anyway, thanks. Stay away from Islam. Stay away from Islam. And have a good day. Stay away from Islam. That's affecting your, you know, your small brain.